Hello and welcome to Cool Time Life. I'm your host, Steve Prentice. Let me start with an insult. I remember reading a comment someone made online about, well, you know, I can't even remember what the comment was about actually, but I remember the burn. Some troll disagreed with the writer's comment and wrote in reply, go back to freelancing. I remember being initially confused by this remark. I mean, what was wrong with freelancing? What did he mean by that? I have been essentially freelancing my entire career, and I feel I have done pretty well. So what was the stigma that this troll was trying to push? That freelancing isn't real work? That you only freelance if you can't find a proper job? I questioned the troll's comments from three perspectives. The first was my own experience. Two and a half decades of adventure, meeting new customers, devising new products and solutions, setting my own calendar and my own career path. Exhilarating and rewarding. Never dull or repetitive. So what could be better than that? Then I thought of the other freelancers that I know. They, too, never stop improving their products. They are masters at finding work. They might change customers from month to month, but the work never stops for those who know how to find it. It is job security anchored by your own talents and motivations, not those of an HR department. Thirdly, I thought of the people I had met during one of my long-term contracts, where I taught groups of recently fired executives how to cope with the depression of job loss and the resulting loss of their identity. These people were truly at sea, with no compass and no hope. And this is what happens when people get buried in their salary jobs and allow no time for the entrepreneurial networking that is at the heart of freelancing. They don't know who they are, and they don't know where to go because they have never built the safety net that every freelancer owns. That is why, by the way, that I wrote my third book, which is entitled, Is This the Day I Get Fired? Go back to freelancing. Did that comment reveal a deep-seated fear held by the writer who, like most other bullies, projects his insecurities on those he tries to intimidate? Well, I have news for that bully as well as everyone else, including worried parents who fear that freelancing is not as secure as a career job or a unionized job. Not only is it more secure since the power of mobility and self-sufficiency rests with the individual rather than their employer, it is also the future of work. I remember a comment that a guest speaker once said at a networking session that I was hosting. He said, the chief difference between a salaried employer and a contractor is that a contractor knows when his or her last day is and can do something about it. We are in an age of profound transformation. Technology continues to change jobs and indeed make many of them redundant. It balances this out by creating new jobs in their place as well as making it possible for networking and freelancing to flourish. But to anyone who grew up watching dad and or mom leave the house every day at 7 o'clock and return home at supper time, year in and year out, it becomes difficult to envision any other lifestyle regardless of how secure it ultimately is. Heavy hitters like RBC Royal Bank of Canada and McKinsey have publicly declared the following facts, which are typical of many employers and experts who are carefully watching the changing world of work. McKinsey and company have stated that 60% of all occupations have at least 30% of activities that are technically automatable, and that automation will affect about 50% of the world economy. The Royal Bank of Canada envisions that 2.4 million Canadian job openings will happen in the next three years, of which 50% will undergo a skills overhaul. The skills that will be required include soft skills, such as critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, empathy, and social perceptiveness. The way in which these will be learned will be more along lifelong learning patterns in place of traditional linear education. But to take this even further, consider these three rather stunning facts delivered recently at the World Economic Forum. Number one. Less than a decade from now, by 2027, the majority of the U.S. workforce will be freelance. The majority. Number two, artificial intelligence and robotics will create more jobs, so long as we responsibly guide the innovation. And number three, cities will compete against each other to attract top talent as they see economic ecosystems grow and flourish amidst a world of communication, connection, and collaboration. These comments were made by Stefan Casriel, who is the CEO of Upwork, one of the largest and most successful freelancing websites around. But it is important to recognize that freelancing is not a cottage industry. Large multinational companies like Pfizer and Samsung are part of this rising breed of enterprises that have turned online to find freelancers. And there are others out there looking for highly specialized talent and paying well for it. 
One of these is Innocentive.com, a company that, quote, enables organizations to put their unsolved problems and unmet needs, which are framed as challenges, out to the crowd to address, unquote. In other words, it's crowdsourcing of innovation. Putting the bounty on a solution. Maybe it's an industrial challenge like how to get toothpaste into a newly designed tube, or how to economically prevent oil from freezing when stored in cold climates. You would think that large companies would have all the engineering brilliance it needs to solve these problems right away from the inside, but they don't. Very often it's those experts on the outside, the ones who must stay constantly ahead of the knowledge curve, Pairing this with their extensive practical experience, these are the ones who come out with the solution more quickly and more cost-effectively. Let me draw a parallel distinction. Companies the world over have, over the past few years, become familiar with cloud and with it related technologies such as artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things. What are these innovations doing for them? Well, far more than simply storing your data, the accessibility and data flow that these technologies have enabled has given rise to the as-a-service industry. Where once companies shipped boxes of their products to their customers, they now see the value in many cases of actually giving the basic physical product away for free and then monetizing the services needed to support it along with the data. Individual consumers already see this daily when they use their computers. Products like Microsoft Office, for example, used to arrive in a box and required individual installation from disks. But now Microsoft and other software applications are all subscription based. Sometimes they're even free. The manufacturers are responsible for testing and upgrading, and they do so remotely via your internet connection. The same principle applies to every other as-a-service enterprise, which is what makes cloud storage and security so attractive and practical in the first place. The supplier stays responsible for the upkeep and quality. It need no longer remain in-house, where it would be prone to delays and budget cuts. So, back to the workforce. I can speak from direct experience. When I teach new topics to a group of employees, they admit they spend so much time closeted away working on the internal problems of the moment, they never get the chance to look up and around and see what the outside world is doing. This becomes the key value proposition of an as-a-service freelancer. Just like cloud providers and software manufacturers, the freelancer is responsible for maintaining the skills and knowledge that a company needs. And now, with direct and immediate communication and the capacity for working remotely, there is no reason for them to ever physically visit the company's brick-and-mortar operations if need be. I myself have had a number of writing and project management projects with companies who have enough writers and enough project managers in-house, but the problem is, if they were to reserve or hire one of these individuals, they would have to wait for six months before the backlog is cleared and they'd have these people at their disposal. When they need something done now, they need it done fast, they turn to an outside supplier despite their wealth of talent in-house in order to get it done now and correct. It's a win-win for everybody. Now, freelancing is not new. There have been freelancers for centuries. The very word freelance denotes a mercenary fighter whose weapons, including the lance, were free up and available to anyone who wanted to hire them, free of political connections, free of fealty to any one lord or king. Companies have outsourced work to other countries, that's not new. Call centers and tech support, for example, have been around for quite a while. And even the notion of as-a-service machinery has its roots in leasing and rental programs. But there's more to it now. We have passed this tipping point. As-a-service is more than just leasing. It is about servicing, maintenance, and aftermarket opportunities that go well beyond any physical machine. And freelancing is far more than just hiring warm bodies to cover peak periods. Freelancing is a new type of work fueled by communications and data technologies that helps get customer and supplier together more efficiently. According to a study commissioned by Upwork itself, half of the millennial generation is already freelancing. There is an inherent security in freelancing, reinforced by the ever-present reminder that you are personally responsible for your future. Now, this might strike many as the opposite of security. After all, how can that compare to the permanence of a salaried position, especially when it comes to qualifying for a mortgage? But ask any salaried employee what their biggest fear is. It's going to be losing their job. And that is not a healthy way to live. So, back to the insult that started this monologue. Go back to freelancing. Many people reveal their own fears in the insults and the swear words they use against others. And as I tell my audiences, I myself have been looking for work for 25 years now, and I keep finding it. It's always interesting, it always adds something to my skill set, and it always keeps me in demand. This is what the 
gig economy is all about. So, there you have it, my podcast on the value of freelancing and the gig economy based on an insult that struck me one day. A list of all of our podcasts and their related blogs, all of this is available at steveprentice.com, S-T-E-V-E-P-R-E-N-T-I-C-E.com under the podcasts tab. You can always drop me a line through the contact us form on the same site, and you can follow me on Twitter if you'd like at Stephen Prentice, S-T-E-V-E-N-P-R-E-N-T-I-C-E. By the way, if you are looking for an entertaining keynote speaker for your company's next event, I have a humorous one called Not Secure, which pokes fun at a whole range of workplace and technology challenges that we have all experienced. And you can find out more about that as well at the same place, steveprentice.com. So, until next time, I'm Steve Prentice. Thanks for listening.